1985, Clive Waring was stricken with viral encephalitis, leaving him with a profound memory deficit. Now, at the age of 60, he remains a prisoner of the present moment. He has very little memory of his life either before or after his illness. Because of concern for his safety, it has never been possible for Clive to live independently. He initially spent seven years in a London hospital, seven months in a general medical ward, and the rest of the time in an acute psychiatric ward. At the time, Britain had no long-term residential facilities for individuals with brain injury. In 1989, Ticehurst House Hospital, located in rural England, opened a specialized brain injury rehabilitation service. Clive moved there in 1992, and he lives there today. His wife, Deborah, visits him as often as possible. His memories of her and his feelings for her make these visits very emotional for them both. What we try to provide for Clive is, is a quiet, calm atmosphere. Basically, because he has no memory for events leading up to, to the current moment, anything which um, really places a demand to know what's happening uh, is upsetting for him. So we, he doesn't like going to places where uh, he's unfamiliar. He doesn't really like visiting local towns or visiting places where there are lots of people because uh, for him, he will keep waking up, as he puts it, in, in these strange places, not knowing where he is. Whereas if he's here in, in the house or going for walks in the ground, then it's less demanding on his memory and he remains much calmer. We try to train the staff so that they don't ask Clive questions or begin discussions which put a load on his memory. For example, if you ask Clive, how are you today? Uh, there's an implicit demand on, well, I'm better today than I was yesterday. And he gets quite upset and he will then uh, start to talk about how he's been ill and how he can see and hear for the first time. So what we do is talk about the here and now. We um, ask him if he'd like a coffee. We enter into conversation and, and Clive is still a, an excellent conversationalist. But it's all about current events. It's about the surroundings. So we might comment on all the sun shining out of the window, but we wouldn't say, oh, it's a nice day today because that implies that um, he knows what day it is and he knows what the weather was like yesterday and so on. So we have to try to be careful not to place those demands on his memory uh, because he then does become upset and uh, we, we want him to have a, a calm and uh, content yeah, life. Yeah. Oh, darling, I tell you it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got there? I bought you some cake. Oh, I'm failed. Uh, I'll leave better than men. <laughs> I think so, yes. <laughs> I'd go along with that. Oh, good. <laughs> Would you like a Danish pastry? It's a lovely idea. Uh, Would you like one? I would, actually. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> We've got enough, too. That's nice. Yes, one each. Here we are, Mike. Oh, thank you very much. Sorry, they're rather large, aren't they? And ladies, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Take some more. <laughs> Oh, this is enormous. We're dealing with a hole, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Well, have a serviette. Oh, no, thank you, Dad. Make it easy. Oh, that sounds like a male name. Serviette who? Mm -hmm. Serviette. Yes, sir. Oh, sir. Serviette, yes. yes. One of the things that characterises uh, Clive's day is that he c continually makes entries in his diary. Now, I say makes entries in his diary rather than keeps a diary, because, in fact, he's not keeping the diary. He, it is an inner compulsion to record the momentous event of waking up because uh, Clive's uh, perception of his own condition is that because he has no memory whatsoever up to the current 10, 20 seconds uh, or maybe half a minute, depending on whether there have been distractive, any proactive interference, on the whole, his conscious working span memory is 
that current minute. So everything else behind the minute is blank. So everything until now is unknown and is void. So he uses the analogy of feeling as if he has just woken up. He says it's like just waking up for the first time. It's like just becoming conscious. It's as if I have been unconscious for however many years. And because this is a continual state, unless he's actually engaged on a conversation or on playing patience to solitaire, which he does a lot, or on playing the piano or on taking a walk, unless he's, his mind is elsewhere engaged, that is his experience of life, which is, oh, it's as if I've just woken up. Oh, you're the first person I've seen. Oh, I haven't, you know, and it's this uh, amazement that's, uh, that from, I mean, can you imagine what would it be like if you were unconscious and you just came to, but you didn't have a lot of people around your bed saying, oh, you've been unconscious, you're in hospital. You've just got people eating a meal or, or watching TV as if nothing has happened. So he is habituated to that condition. He realizes that it's not surprising, but he uses that as an analogy for the experience of having no memory. It's as if I've just woken up. And because for him it is momentous, he has to write it down. And he has to write it down on any available surface. If the diary is in front of him, he will write it down there. He will record the time, 10.50 a.m., awake first time. 10, and then he looks at the previous entry, which was 10.48 a.m., awake first time, and he says, no, I wasn't awake then. That wasn't me. That wasn't proper awakeness. This is the first real awakeness. So he goes through the diary, scoring out previous entries and underlining the current new entry because this now is the real awakeness. All the previous awakenesses are unknown to me. So what he's, he's saying, something about ego, he's saying something about identity. He's saying, I, I know now, I know this moment now. I have no conscious recollection of those previous entries in my handwriting, though I acknowledge obviously they were me. Therefore, I, uh, this is the real awakeness and you have to take notice of that. So he'll underline it many times. And what's interesting is that over the years as the diaries have stacked up, the diaries, the, the pages have become written in a more and more frenzied way as if to say it's really important that you take notice of this just as a prisoner has to scratch the fact of his existence on the prison cell wall. I was here t today and I'm alive now. You, the world, you have to know this. Cl that's what Clive is doing with his diary. And I think he's actually telling us something quite important about his perception of his condition. And he is the best eyewitness for his condition.